Are you ready? Okay, I'd like to call a meeting to order, 5.30. And um, any changes on the agenda? No changes, we just wanna move the order around to discuss highway budget first. Okay, excellent. The too. So, new business, discuss highway budget. Would you like this? I was just gonna start with a okay. quick rundown, just so everybody kind of understands what what our highway department's made up of. Um, so we have a superintendent who's Kevin Barrow sitting in the middle, and to the left is Matt Frederick, who's our um, streets foreman, and then to the right is Derek Small, who's the uh, town highway foreman. So we currently have two shops, one up on the Cochrane Road that Derek manages. He has six employees that work for him. Then Matt's over on uh, Old Creamery with the village shop, and he has four employees that he manages. Uh, in total, we maintain 92.13 miles of road and around 14 miles of sidewalk. Can you say that one more time? 92.13 miles of road and approximately 14 miles of sidewalk. So during the winter time, some of the just some of the duties. There's been some questions of what what the guys do, their, what the highway department does, and obviously the winter time they maintain the roads. Um, this morning was true testament of that, and they take care of wind damage, trees down uh, during the winter time when they're not maintaining the roads. They're doing the maintenance on their vehicles. One thing that I never knew until this summer is um, probably and Kevin can correct me if I'm wrong, but probably 90% of our um, work that's done mechanically on the trucks is done in-house you know three of our techs are were full-time technicians you know mechanics before they came here um these guys do everything from brakes i mean i'll let kevin go in it they literally do everything you know if it's a warranty item or a power plant issue then it goes back to the dealer but but we do a lot of our maintenance in-house which saves us money in the long run uh, they deal with freezing culverts in the wintertime, making sure they're thawed out. So uh, flooding purposes, springtime, we have mud season and they deal with, um, in the village, they deal with the infrastructure freezing as far as catch basins, making sure they're unthawed out as well or not plugged up. They take care of the street sweeping in the springtime and they also take care of roadside mowing. We do all that internally. We don't sub any of that out. Uh, we do ditching uh, during the summer, weather permitting, and staff permitting, we run the graders, uh, two of them a day. Again, that depends on the weather and on staff. A lot of the employees can't take vacation time during the winter because of plowing, so they use the majority of their vacation time in the summer. So it can be kind of thin on certain days. Now that our gravel pit is opened up, they have to haul um, you know, anywhere from, could be 20,000, 20,000, is that a fair number, 25,000? Yeah, of yards or tons? Yards. yards of material from our gravel pit. We need to haul that uh, one dump truck at a time back to the garage. So that takes a significant amount of time. Um, while that's going on, they also have crews doing other duties. Uh, we also, in the village garage, we have spend one whole day of uh, just mowing. They mow roads you know, adjacent to Brooklyn Street over by the Monument, the PD, and other town property that we mow internally. They also take care of potholes and in the wintertime and in the summertime throughout the street and the town highway. All the flower pots and chairs that we see spread out throughout the village in the summertime, these folks pick up and in the fall and they put them all out in the spring of the year. They hang up banners and holiday lights. They also take care of our, a lot of our painting, the crosswalk paintings, the municipal parking lot that behind us and then the one on Bridge Street. We did all that painting internally, so they're all, they do that as well. They chloride the roads in the summertime after they're graded usually, so we don't have huge dust problems. And then again, they do maintenance on their equipment and their trucks. And that's probably not everything they do. That's just a little bit of a, you know, just a quick rundown of what our highway department does. So with that said, we'll turn it over to the superintendent, Kevin Barrows. Thank you. Um, so, just want to dive right in. Um, yes. Gotta, before, before you start, can those of you on um, Zoom hear Kevin? Yes, I can hear him. Okay, great, thanks. 
Thank you. Could our public get this piece of information? It's sitting right out here next to the agenda. Yes. What are some changes? Okay, thanks. Oh, this, is, this is really nice. Thank you. So some of the changes that as I've already received by the handout, um, salaries and benefits, actual overtime hours budgeted less than last year due to the FY22-23 actuals. So we, we're talking, we've talking seen it today, we've gone from this fiscal we're in right now is budgeted at a 25%, and this next one coming up is budgeted at a 21%. So that has saved us some in salaries as well. The um, frozen position for FY23 and 24 has been funded on in this budget. And of course, the union contract arm track was ratified on 631 or 630. That's really it's through 630, 26, which had some impact on the salaries and benefits. Uh, fuel decreased in gallons based on the FY 22 23 usage plus the price based on the U.S. Energy Information Administration in October, the price per gallon is forecasted to be lower. So we should be saving fuel, saving money on the fuel. Uh, plow blades and plow shoes are other things that in the last couple of years, we've moved to a, what, we, what do they call a saber carbide um, cutting edges on our plows and wings. Um, they're just a straight, carbide with a cover plate we were changing them on an average of two to three a winter and these we are getting almost two full years two full winters out of them they're a little more pricier to start but obviously we don't change them as often so it was a saving money uh repairs and maintenance services is decreasing a little bit during uh because of the purchasing of the seven year warranties on our vehicles um, and we are replacing two of our older trucks that are outside of the warranties and that are also in this budget. Trucks, none were purchased in the FY 23 24, purchasing a tandem and a single axle and an F 350. We paid off a tandem and a single axle with this fiscal year we're in right now. So it would be just a carry on basically with those. Uh, line painting has decreased due to the line paint has decreased due to the fact that we bulked up because of the parking lot. Both to be that painted this year. So that seems how that's now done. We don't need that extra funding. Uh, summer maintenance riprap has reduced due to uh, the use due to using more in FY twenty three twenty four. Hot mix has increased due to the paving not being done and repairs needed. Um, we skipped the year here without paving, so it's, we know what next spring is going to bring us, and we're going to need that extra money in the, in the hot tub. Uh, chipping and tree trimming done last year. Uh, we don't plan on doing any this year. Uh, culverts have decreased as well due to the using mostly uh, some Act 64 grants. Uh, for reimbursement on so a lot of the bowlers that we're putting in that we have to and, uh, for the upgrade and, and water clarity of the act 64 requirements for the state. <coughs> culvert improvements have decreased due to the fixing of a big culvert in FY uh, in FY 23-24. Sidewalks, possible funding used from the bridge and infrastructure fund. And then we separated out, uh, had Tina separate out the two handle pit operations. Last year were calculated in at about 175,000. And then this year, this budget coming up for 160. So all of those have saved a considerable size on our budget. If you look at the back page of the budget, we're coming in at 1.55% less than this fiscal year we're in right now. But the problem with that is there is no sidewalk funding. And the paving is usually in our general general fund, so that's a obvious one. 
Can I ask you about sidewalks? Mm -hmm. um, there's talk about um, changing the sidewalks. Is that in planning still? Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Changing them to a different material? Yes. That is up to you folks to right. decide whether or not we're going to hold the sidewalk policy we have right now or if it's something that we should discuss. I think we, uh, we've we talked about bringing suggestions to the board. Um, the the concrete say. sidewalks are really expensive and mm -hmm. when we are talking during budget season of looking to change our policy to where we could do asphalt sidewalks, not necessarily here in like Portland Street, but some of these side streets yeah. where we use asphalt, we feel we, there'd be some cost savings there, yeah. but that would require a change to our policy. I thought we had changed that. We did, but it, we didn't, you have to do concrete sidewalks we didn't change it amongst other things. Curbs, I don't have the, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I know we cannot do asphalt. We, we cannot do asphalt. Now. Oh yes, that, I was like, wait, wait are, are yeah. we doing that? Um, and is that in in planning? I know Todd's going to be here later. I can ask him. I don't know if that has anything. I'm the, I don't know the answer to that. If uh, if that needs to go uh, through planning first, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, just because I, I yeah, it was a a zoning issue. My understanding was okay. I'll find out. But anyway, so that so there's a conversation going on about. Is the cost of the sidewalks. Yes. So if we don't, that will be a while before we have any. We're thinking too, um, you know, there, along with um, the possibility of amending the uh, sidewalk um, uh, protocol or the policy, um, we had been discussing the opportunity because there is no money in this budget to do paving and we have skipped a year uh, already of not doing any paving um, that we would utilize some money out of the bridge and infrastructure fund, um, maybe upwards to $240,000 to um, allocate toward um, Kevin's discretion in terms of how far that money could go and that we need to do something. You know, for years now, um, as we've looked back on previous budgets, um, we have not had the opportunity to do much because the can has been continually kicked down the road on a number of different issues. Um, and that's not, um, that's not speaking ill of prior boards. I think that their mantra was to keep um, any kind of budget increase to a minimum, um, but it's come home to roost for us now. Um, there's a lot of things that this municipality is facing and it cannot do it any longer on the backs of taxpayers, uh, property taxpayers. We need a separate funding mechanism to do this. Um, you know, when we take a look at the trucks, um, two just came off this budget, two will go on it. Um, you know, the cost difference, uh, annual cost difference in financing is about almost $20,000 a truck. Had these been purchased when they were on schedule, um, the tandem was on schedule for 21-22, it would have cost $198,000. Um, fiscal year 23-24, it was proposed, it was $272,000. That's a $75,000 increase. You know, the same thing for the single axle. Single axle was gonna be 166,000. We're looking at approximately 259, it's a $93,000 difference. And those things, you know, we can no longer afford to repair the trucks to try to keep these older models on. And Kevin, you can tell us how much you've had to spend on trying to keep those rigs on the road and what condition they're in. But we need to um, carefully look um, on how we move things forward. And I think that um, this board has talked about um, some options in terms of different revenue streams. I think we need to be creative as we walk down the path on all these budgets on how we um, uh, do things. And um, I think that this is a good start. Kevin, have you, um, I'm sure, and I'm not asking you for a commitment, but you, you're already thinking about what, where the, or you probably already know what needs to be saved. 
You don't have to commit, but you, there's some pressing paving issues. There I'm is. Gonna it's really how much the money, how much money we get, and how far that will go. Okay. The price of asphalt. Okay. Uh, and are you preparing a best case and worst case scenario for us as far as what we actually have to do and what your wish list is? I really don't have a wish list. It's all need really needs to get done. All needs to get done. I have about three number ones right off the top of my head. Okay. And then there's probably at least a half a dozen dozen number twos. Yeah, just an estimate of mileage. <clears throat> Couple. Yeah. Okay. Wait. I, I don't want you to come in or get caught into anything. Just gave me an idea. Well, I think too to um, in conversations with the highway department and Kevin in particular. Um, you know, I know that um, he's beginning to take a look at a sidewalk audit. He's taking a look at the um, at a road audit um, to help prioritize those uh, for the municipality and for his work schedule. So those are all things that are in play as well. I will say the road to um, one of or the reservoir. I forget the name of it. Green Mountain Reservoir. Garfield Road. Garfield. Well, Garfield. Because I used to work up there. That it's like a race track. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I was like, Nurr. it's like hard not to like because of the curves and stuff. Oh, it's, you guys did a good job on that road. <laughs> Thank you. Now, does the board want to go through each page, each item? We've done that before. I don't think we need the line item. I don't feel like we need to. Does anybody has any else? questions? I, I had a couple, and I think you probably answered all of them. Um, what I, what is a deferred compensation? I don't know what that is. You're looking at the general government budget. If you're looking at deferred compensation. You know, yeah, government. it's on. Um, oh, which one? Under administration, it's like the. Oh, I'm sorry. Third item down, third or fourth. <laughs> deferred compensation is a. Um, it's a program that if you take if you don't take our health insurance oh, it's great. it's almost like a you know an incentive to you know for retirement is what it is it's one of the options if you don't take our health insurance thank you and i, I was surprised you you already mentioned about the fuel prices going down so mm -hmm. just out of curiosity uh and this is probably a Question for Judy, because I think you were working on the landlines. It says local service two lines. Was it was this part of the whole uh, phone internet thing that you were looking at revising? I don't, I don't do budgets. I have no okay. idea what you're talking about. Oh, when I did, <laughs> yeah, when I did budget for the landlines, yeah. we did budget with the new phone system in mind. It says go to right on it. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so the that's, new. That's why that's lower. That's great. Yeah. I'm looking at all my notes, um, Kevin. I think you've answered everything. I think the other piece of this conversation, too, is the fact that um, our lease agreement um, on Old Creamy Road expires in September of uh, 2025. And um, um, we've been in sort of initial discussions a, a little bit about um, what what can happen there and what could happen up on Cochrane Road. And I think, uh, Jason, I think that you've um, begun conversations with the Menage Corporation to talk a little bit about if we needed to try to go to a, a different metric, um, what possibilities might exist there as well. And, and also, I think, sort of in parallel to that, um, beginning to have a conversation about um, maybe doing a um, consultant uh, on uh, Cochrane Road to see what possibilities that facility as well as property can lend us. Yeah, and I appreciate you um, having all this written out. This is really helpful. The presentation was excellent. So there's every question I had a little Thank marked you. up. Pardon? Thank Thank you. Thanks, Tina. I made him do it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Don, do you have any questions? A lot of time. I, I don't have any questions, Judy, I, but I do want to thank Kevin and uh, and Matt and Derek as well for uh, all the work that they've put into this. And I've had multiple conversations with them. And I agree, the presentation was, was really nice, nice and clean and tidy and really highlighted. I think for those of us that went through the budget, 
um, Kevin's rather nicely highlighted all the potential questions that that uh, that that were in there. I, things went in and out there for a while. I missed anything he might have said about Do Hamill, so I'll apologize now for repeating myself. But uh, there's, it's nice to know that there's a, a savings in the operations of the Do Hamill pit for the town as well. Thank you. I see uh, Tommy's hand up. Oh, well, before we go to Tommy. Richard, do you have any questions? No, or no I think this good job. I just want to have one other question. Oh, go ahead. Um, Kevin, the, um, on uh, page four, the capital infrastructure improvement um, that got zeroed out for this year, was there nothing there that we needed to address? You felt that we needed to address? Okay. Tommy? Yeah, I have several. This is Nancy Donovan. I have a couple of questions. One is um, Tina had said deferred compensation was what they were getting if they didn't get health insurance. But in the line above it, it says cash in lieu of health. So are those two separate things? They are two separate things. They're two options. You have two options if you don't take our health insurance. One is to receive cash, and the other is to receive a sum of money that you can put in the um, 457 deferred comp state plan for further retirement funds. So you have the option of either one of those things if you do not take our health insurance. Okay. Um, and I have a comment also about why we're spending the quantity of money that we are to have two garages. That seems like an expense that we could do without because to continue to rent a facility is um, severely impeding our um, ability to pay for things as taxpayers. I, I, you're not alone. I think that's, um, Chris has just addressed that of looking at a way of getting out of the lease that we're in right now. It expires in 2025. And, um, we're be seriously looking at a way of combining the garages. Right now, we cannot combine the garages because the garage in Cochrane Road is a not in good repair. Am I correct on that? Nancy, this is Don McDowell. Uh, I, I would just add, yes, there's a number of us on the board that very much agree with you that putting the money into two separate buildings is uh, is kind of crazy right now. And we have there has been a lot of work done uh, to try and uh, think of a better way of consolidating our better our garages and not be paying as much rent as we're paying. We're paying almost hundred thousand dollars a year for the uh, garage on Old Creamery Road, and we could use that. We we could use that hundred thousand dollars and put it towards our our own garage. That would make a lot more sense. And Absolutely. So I very very much agree, and I know there's other board members that agree as well. So, do you want to say anything, Chris? Oh, I'm good. Okay. Oh, we got we got to move the microphone. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. Now, I brought up at least eight months ago about the, the about the highway garage moving, and then I had talked to Nick Minosh myself, and he said there was there was no problems, um, and that was just on a Sunday afternoon on a car show. Um, I, I guess at this point, I just want to know what's going on. You guys say you're talking. I gave you my ideas. I think my ideas are good. If if that town garage is in in repair, how come nothing's been done yet? And when is something going to be done? Because the taxpayers do not want a bond vote dropped on them. So I'd be glad to start that conversation, Tony. Um, I think the first step is to, to get a consulting engineer up on Cochrane Road to take a look at that facility, um, see if it's worth renovating. Um, should we add on to it? Should we build, uh, renovate and build a separate building on that property? What are the permits necessary to bring that to fruition? But give us an idea of dollar value of how feasible it is to do something up on Cochrane Road. That's step one. 
Step two is, is again, finding a separate revenue stream to be able to begin to look at all of our infrastructure needs here in this community, including the town garage. We've got a, a police department, which we heard Jason eloquently tell us how um, inefficient and unworkable that space is. We've got a, um, a, a fire department that has to special order specific equipment to fit into the size of that building. And how efficient is that? And how cost effective is that? But we needed a, a way to pay for that stuff so that you and I on our tax property tax bill um, are not going to see incredible increases to do that. And it's called a local option tax. And that's what we're looking at. So there's a lot of pieces in play right now. Um, and as they develop and we get information, um, they will be shared with the public. But at this point, um, we have engaged um, uh, Kerry Johnson, um, who is the uh, former town manager at uh, St. Albans Town to start working on some of these projects, to develop an RFP, to go out so we can begin to analyze that stuff. So there are things in, in process. Um, we're not sitting here um, idly twiddling our thumbs, um, not doing anything. We are with due diligence trying to solve some problems in this community. So we move in a direction of planning, we move in a direction of how we can fund it. And when those two pieces come together, there's great potential here to get some things done. Does anyone else have a question about the highway department? Good. It's uh, on the tracks here. Uh, he was talking about it. Uh, the replacement tracks, you say, uh, are replacing number 67. What, what was that? That's a national standard. What? 67. Number 67. No, that's a 350. Sorry. Yeah. It's a replace number 67. What? Is that a truck? Is that a replacement? Yeah. That's a hedgehog. Okay. What year is that? Okay. 17. How about the, uh, how about the 45? Number 45. 2011 International. Really? 2011? Yeah. That's broken down right now. Yeah. Yeah. How many total trucks do you have? We have four tandems and four single axles. And then we have one, two, three, three pickups and two one tons. So L5 and two one tons. So I wasn't mad saving it. That's how many? That's eight. Eight. Thirteen. Okay. Our jury throne. Um, just going through the list, um, I see under uh, salaries and wages, there's a note that says see detail uh, projected wage worksheet. Um, where can I find that? We can get you that. Yeah. The... Well, it's all a guess, but yes, we can get you that. Okay. No, is it? It's not on this one. No. It's okay. Not. Okay. I see that the, uh, the first line salaries and wages, which makes up a large part of the total budget, um, has increased uh, from nine sixty two to a million oh fifty two, which is about a nine point four percent increase. Assuming that the overtime is included in that line and the overtime uh, as Kevin explained it is going to be slightly less than uh, it was last year it's projected to be slightly less um, how do we get 9.4 percent increase because uh, the cost of living is only 3.2 for this coming year plus they get a step so the steps are what but also they unfroze a position that was frozen right. in this right. year. So there's another salary in there that wasn't there last year. Another employee. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. And I would and I'm gonna step on a limb here saying that the budget 22 23 24 budget isn't the actual budget. I mean that's what was proposed, but we don't know what the right. actual we don't know what it'll be because we're still in that year. Right. Still in yeah. yeah. Uh, the sidewalk inventory, yeah, I, it's I, worth mentioning, Jerry, that, uh, sorry, Jerry, it's worth mentioning that 
we're not adding another employee. We're just simply putting the employee back in that was removed last year. That was not removed, but it was it was frozen. Understood. Yes, I, I remember that from last year, or last time we discussed discussed that. Um, sidewalk inventory, the fifteen thousand budget. Is that going to be an in-house thing, or is that going to be by consultant? We by consultant. Oh, consultant. Okay. Are you applying? <laughs> oh, what happened? <laughs> uh uniforms i assume the, the uniforms we spent twenty thousand, approximately twenty thousand last year projecting the same amount is that something that's in a in the union uh, agreement that uh the town is to provide that to employees or is that something that's just kind of a preferred thing to do it is in the union agreement that we have to provide that however our contract with our current um uniform company is coming up in may of 24 mm -hmm. and we intend to go out to bid Okay. Just so that you're aware. Okay, very good. Okay, Tom asked the same question I had about the trucks. Um, see, the chloride is down a little bit, but the salt, which is a uh, quarter million dollars. Yeah, I know salt goes up, but last meeting I brought up the fact that. Um, Hyde Park and some of the other, uh, I think Johnson Cambridge are experimenting with brine. And I didn't really get a, an answer that I thought was helpful last time. So I'm just bringing it up again. Is this something we should be looking at to reduce the amount of salt that we use for uh, winter? And, and you don't have to answer, it's just, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if, if you guys have opinions about it, I'd love to hear it. That we sent a whole crew went over to Hyde Park here less than a month ago and, mm -hmm. and went through a program with the University of Vermont and other um, people that had come in talking about the brine system that Hyde Park has, uh, the expenses of it, the benefits of them, um, the gamut. Um, one of the big uh, producers there of um, salt usage. Basically, Greg came out and said that in 50 years, we'll still be using salt. <coughs> well, it's it's I'm not, not saying that it's not a bad thing, but to get into it, it's about a hundred plus thousand dollars. I, I understand it, but it's not to say that this is going to replace salt. What it's yeah. supposed to do, and I think you know, you know pretty well, well, is it's supposed to uh, take care of the pre-storm application of salt. Right? Yes. Yes. With our trucks aren't set up, we're adding another thirty thousand onto a truck price of the truck. Price of the truck. Yeah. Yeah. Set up and prime. Yeah. Well, it's a do, it's a dollars and cents kind of thing. Yeah. That that. I think I think what I think what you had said last time we talked about this, Kevin, it was the town was looking into it. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. has been done yeah. here before. Yes, we have tried it. When I first came here, when they started weeding out. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't work that great, mm -hmm. but it also takes the more technology that they have now. The pumps, Hyde Park just barely, they bought a system three years ago. They just replaced their computer part of it for $40,000. So when you figure that out, buying salt, and the guy- You buy a lot of salt you're still for 40000 And there's only 5% of Vermont that does the growth. So it's a small number compared to what everybody else is using salt. It's a matter of how you manage yourself. Mm -hmm. Did the uh, the computer uh, replacement, was that because of the uh, corrosiveness of the salt or because of the outdated uh, computer? Something happened. Something happened. Well, they fought the first system. Yeah. If I guess you get no. Stop. I mean, can the board set up with it right now? No. <laughs> well, you know, we're all we're all here because we're all concerned about the budget, and we all want to maintain as much of the town services as possible. So, you know, these are just food for thought kind of things. I know that wine is very very popular in other states. So, I'm following for Jerry because I think what he's asking is: is you you studied it? Is it something we need to look at 
to co for consideration down the road. Is it worth it's, us? It's possible, yes. I mean, it, it's going to increase my budget. Right. But, you know, better to start thinking about it now. Is it, do you guys really think that that's a direction we should start planning to go in? That's, and you don't have to answer right now, but I see what is the conversation is that we ought, should start down the road, you know, maybe even 10. Is that somewhere we want to go? I mean, it's definitely on the radar, and there's a neighboring town yeah. similar size to us. They're experimenting with it this year, and we're going to keep a close eye on that and yeah, see see how it works out. So it's it's on the radar, and there's been conversations yeah. about it. That makes sense to do that. Right? Yeah. Thank you. That's, that's helpful. That's all I have. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So anyone else who has any comments or questions? Tom, come on. Come on up. Yep. Just, just introduce yourself again. Tom Pudian. Last year you had you had a revenue of two hundred forty eight thousand uh, dollars. Is there revenue that's going to be added to this budget? It wasn't. It was. I didn't see any. What are you? What are you <clears throat> where, where is that? Oh, you're talking about the overview. The overview is going to be restructured this year. It's not going to be a department specific. So where's but that yeah, what, where does that revenue come from? Where does it go? That but, revenue that you're looking at comes from the state of Vermont, and that's our state aid to highways money. They give that to us every year. Every municipality uh, gives okay. an inventory of roads to the state, and they reimburse. So where is it? Where do you put it? What fund does it go to? Does it go right and buys his truck? It doesn't go to any specific expense. It all all money goes right into a big pot, and that's how you pay for everybody's expenses. In my understanding, there's there's like a million three hundred thousand in that pot right now. So that's the in what pot? No, no that's like, the uh, that's the uh, unallocated surplus. Yeah, surplus. So we're, we're, we're just, talking about the uh, fund balance, and that's not yeah that that's not in this. See, this is what confuses me. We have all this money, and it's all in different funds, allocated funds, unallocated. I mean, there's a lot of money—a well, million and three hundred thousand. What are we? We're, we're, we're going to have doing? this conversation. We're stick with the highway budget. And that's I mean, this has to do with the highway bu budget, Judy. That, that's money is, that could be used to buy their trucks. But we will be discussing all of that in the general government budget on December 11th. We'll be discussing the general government expenses and then we'll be talking about all the revenue, all the money. And that, that's when we'll be talking about it. And it'll include that $258,000. So it, it's not in a restricted fund specifically for highway. No, we don't do that. We don't have that. Okay. I think that's what he's saying. Like the, the fund that paid for, the, for their sidewalk. Uh, uh, plow, $159,000. Where did that come from? See, you got all this money as a taxpayer. I got no idea where you've drawn this money out of. So why couldn't we have taken that money? In fact, why can't we still take that money and buy radios for all these guys? So, so the $1.3 million, and Tina, correct me if I'm wrong, includes the uh, unallocated fund balance money that was formerly known as ARPA. No. 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 The $1.3 million is money that has been left over through the years that we've never used to defray the cost of the budget. We have never used that. It's gotten to the point where it's $1.3 million. That is fund balance money. It is money that is not allocated for anything. Ideally, we'll use that some of that money so that we can lower taxes. That's the whole point of it. This is tax money that's been collected throughout the years that has not been spent. And when we talk about the revenues and our uh, rep, our general overview, we'll talk in, at length about that. So, if we can just confine your questions about the highway budget, that would be that would. Why be can't we take that money? and buy their three trucks and lower their budget. And we won't have to well, worry about Tom, the budget. We, Tom, we may be doing just that, but we're gonna go over the revenue in a couple of weeks. You know, the money is oh, going back into the budget. Just I, I hope you understand 
my confusion on this because I, I I know there's all kinds of money out there, and you keep you know tell us we're going to talk about it later, and it's going to be used for this and that. Uh, but but uh, we're confused. That's a lot of money. It's very confusing. Well, we'll I have we'll to agree with you. It's very confusing. Wouldn't it help to let us know about it? Well, that's what's going to happen next month. It wouldn't have been nice to know about it a little while back when you had that million and three hundred thousand dollars. We still we have it. That's my problem. You guys still have it. We don't know about it. You're confusing funds. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, can, I, can I just say something? Yes, Don. I think, Tom, Tom, frankly, I agree. You're, you're raising some good questions. This is Don McDowell speaking again. And I think it's fair to say that what the highway department is trying to do tonight and what the other departments that have already presented are trying to do is just lay out exactly what their planned expenditures are without muddying the waters with you know, the unall unallocated fund money monies, which yes, could be used to buy trucks. They could be used to buy the radios. And that is a conversation that will happen later. But let's begin by looking at what the planned expenditures are and just look at that, that clean slate. Everything, what you're talking about, Tom, is going to come up. <laughs> I promise you it's, 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 it's on its way. Um, we're only we're in the end, you know, this is only the end of November. So we have lots of time to talk about that unallocated fund and some of the other funds that are out there as well. Thanks, Don. Um, Chris, do you want to say something more? I have a question for um, the dump truck. Uh, uh, you said it from 2011 that it's not working. Right, it's down right now. Right. So um, is that going to affect us this summer or, or no, this winter? We're, we're working on getting it fixed. You're working on getting it fixed is what I was asking. Yes. So when you buy the new one, um, will we get any money for this one if we'll get something for it? We'll get yeah. something. Yeah. 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 But right now you're working to get it going through. So that we can use it, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. this you technically wouldn't get this until the budget's approved, correct? Correct. Okay. So I saw Chris's hand up, but he's gone. Uh Tommy. Uh, this is Nancy Donovan again. I've got some questions just while we're thinking about the big overview on the highway situation. I think we also need to be paying attention to the the small numbers. For instance, under meeting and training, uh, it was budgeted at $2,000. We've actually used 210, but for the next year, the budget proposal is 4,000. That seems kind of out of range as well as like office supplies. It was budgeted at 2,500 and we've actually used $214, but for the budget coming up, it's it's uh, allocated at 4,500. I'm thinking if we could take some of these expenses that seem out of line of what it past usage has been, we could lower down the budget. The meeting and training was uh, the actual budget for 22-23 was $210, and then the budget for 23-24 was $4,000. We don't know exactly what right, the... That's the year we're in now. That's the year we're in now. I don't, we don't know what the actual budget will be at the end of the year, whether we've spent the $4,000 or not. So uh, Kevin and has put in for $3,000 for training and OSHA training and so on and so forth for $3,000 this coming year. Well, say for instance on the office's expense, uh, the budget for 2020, 22, 23 was 2,500, but our actuality we've used $214, but for next year we're budgeted 4,500. No, no, that's, that's incorrect. incorrect. It's incorrect, Nancy. 23, 24, we budgeted that amount. This year we're only budgeting the budget that we're talking about tonight, we only budgeted $1,000. So the budget we're talking about what, is so what what is the 4500 that's the budget year that we're in as we speak today the 23 24 but the budget that we're proposing tonight is 24 25 fiscal year 24 25 so we lowered we lowered office supplies by thirty five hundred dollars okay I, it looked like we were spending budgeting more and i didn't know why we would be budgeting more when we didn't use what we had 
Uh, the reason that their budget, they budgeted 4,500 for the year that we're in now is because they needed to replace some computers. Did they replace them? I think they're going to. They haven't gotten them yet. They're going to be a surplus. We will work with the phones instead. Okay. Anyone else in the, in the audience here? Go ahead. Uh, Tony, Cody, Cody Hill. So these buildings are going to be my pet peeve. I want you to know that. <laughs> I'd like to know how much the engineering and all that is costing right now if we're sending people over there. We haven't, we haven't engaged. We haven't sent out a request for a proposal yet, so we haven't got any bids on that. So I can't answer that question. Okay. Uh, and when you know, we'll know? Yes. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> RFPs have to come through the select board meeting, correct? Uh, with a town administrator, I'm not sure about a town manager. Mm -hmm. There's, do you have any idea if RFPs, does a manager have the right to sign off on the RFPs? I believe that a town manager gets to sign off on any contract. <clears throat> but we're so. six months out from a manager, so. Six. Yeah, well, we've got to get through the holidays. I mean, Optimum, maybe shorter, but okay. yeah. So, so we'll cross that bridge when it comes. Ready to close uh, out the highway budget here. discussion for tonight. Should we move on to the next item? Are we ready for that? We're not. Thank ready you guys for. for uh, thank you for being here. Thank you guys for um. In my room yeah. And so. Oh, Todd's here, I think. Yeah, but we're waiting on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we told her 20 after 6, so oh. we're a little ahead of schedule, but All right. I do have something real quick to talk about. Is December okay. 2nd, our 23rd Festival of Lights, starts at 10 a.m. with Santa and Mrs. Claus. Uh, it goes throughout the day. This is posted yeah. on our social media. So what is where? December 2nd. Yeah, it looks like the breakfast is over, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're we're waiting. We just gotta take like a five minute break. And... Yeah. We're waiting for someone to join us for the meeting for the next part. Is there anything that Todd could talk to us ahead of time before she comes or not? Should we wait? Um, we can't do no. anything that's not on the agenda, not an agenda item. We can do, I don't know if there's anything you can do with Thea beforehand before she's here, or we might as well just wait. She'll be here. Yeah, she, oh. might, she might be here. Okay. No, that's. Yeah. Check that out. No, she somebody did. else. Okay. We're looking for Thea. There's Thea. Oh, somebody she's here. We're from the great state. All right. Thea we'll has arrived. So, Thea, we're, we're going to be talking Still about the, the uh, up on, if you want to call the front. There. I don't know how much you want to interact or want to be saying so anything. I'm not Todd's going to say anybody. more. Thanks. You're not getting a picture now. Check it out. Okay. Just give me a review. You're all yeah, set. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Well, thanks, guys. Get some sleep. And put the fence right back up. Thank you, gentlemen. Good to know. Hope you get some sleep. So um, how do you want to handle this? Is, is Todd, are you doing part of a presentation or? I don't have to, unless wants to talk, or I think you can talk about the needs first, and I'll talk about specifics, how to get it done. Okay. All right. Start with the human, so it's, start with the human part, but really that. Okay, so we have your application here. Yeah, sure. so you have to, to come well, up and then uh, introduce yourself. Just introduce yourself just for the people on Zoom. And you don't have to worry about the microphone. It's only for recording. It doesn't magnify amplify in, in the room. All right, just speak into the microphone. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Thea Alvin. I live at 1626 Laporte Road in Morrisville. And I uh, am asking for permission to have a family burial plot on my property. My mother is in hospice care and her wishes are to be buried at my home. I have been caring for her there um, for the past three and a half years. And um, she's advancing now and needs um, moment to moment care. So uh, time is of the essence, although with Alzheimer's disease, her brain is all over the map. 
Um, today, for example, she uh, was able to make herself a cup of coffee in the microwave, whereas a week ago, she didn't drink coffee and couldn't speak and couldn't stand. Um, so I, I don't know uh, how urgent the petition is, so I really appreciate that you made it urgent uh, to help me to, to make this be able to happen um, so that we could get all of the things in place. Um, what I'm doing for her burial is um, I raise Angora goats and there will be a shroud made for her of the goat fiber from our farm. And um, there's another person that I heard about through the Vermont Forest Cemetery in Roxbury mm -hmm. that um, is making wicker baskets for people to have a green burial in. So she would be buried with, according to her wishes, she has never worn any kind of plastic or polyester fiber. So she would be buried completely in organic, local, handmade from us wow. material in a wicker basket made from um, Western Massachusetts that we would be able to build the people have offered that we would be able to come and even my mom, which is very weird, um, work on her own. Um, she went to school for as a fiber artist at 60 years old. Oh. So this is very, very handmade, hyper local. Um, it, it's to be the spot that we've chosen is under what might be the oldest tree in Morseville. I don't really know. Um, it's a massive maple that's in my backyard. My house was built in 1810, and this tree is on the property line way in the back property. So um, we've picked a spot that met the criteria being, I think it's 167 feet from my well and 280 feet from the nearest neighbor's well. And um, it, there's no bodies of water. There's the um, Ryder Brook, which is really, really far away, but that's like the nearest anything else that's a, a body of water so i don't know what other criteria you might need um and i'm happy to answer any questions or um, field any concerns well, so, should we hear from todd todd's been kind of handling it as our health officer yeah i think you might answer the sure i've worked with you over the last few days and i recommend you approve the request in the past, I worked with Chris a little bit on this. Chris has some very helpful background. In the past, the select board has approved these private burial requests before, but actually I can do them without you as health officer. But the way the form reads right now, which I've written a new form, you guys can act on at the next meeting if you like, to take out the board of health. You are the select board is the board of health as well. And the form, when you look at it, talks about the board of health. And I don't want to speak for the board of health. I can't do that. You're the board of health. So in the future, uh, Luckily, Thea's mom is still with us, and that worked out okay. If, if you're okay with the form at the future meeting, we can do this. I can do this administratively. Um, but this is the way we've done it. We don't do these very often. We do one probably every five years. So it might be a while before you do see another one. But yes, again, I recommend Thea's application meets all the requirements. She worked with me. She actually measured the tape on the wells. I recommend you approve it. And that's the new form you asked me for the changes for today. Yes, yeah, I printed it. So, so do, you, do you have anything you want to ask? Or no, say? Um, you know, I, in my 41 years of, of practicing funeral service in Waterbury, I've done a number of home burials for families. Um, and in all of my experience, uh, town health officer has been an authorized agent. It's never had to go before a select board or a board of health uh, within a municipality. It's certainly within um, that jurisdiction for a health officer. Um, I've talked, I started this conversation with Todd last week um, because I knew that there was some urgency in terms of trying to get this resolved for you. Um, he's assured us and he sent me the, the measurements of the wells and the difference um, and you're more than 500 feet from any kind of other groundwater source. Um, it appears that she meets all of the criteria under state statute for doing a home burial. Um, there is a whole set of criteria which is now on new form. Um, and I would recommend that uh, the board authorize uh, Todd to uh, sign off on the application. I have one question, just as an educational thing. Are you under pressure about weather? Frozen ground, basically? Um, I think we can get an excavator. And that Which is my area of expertise. That's what I get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don, do you have a question or comment? 
No, I'm willing to make a motion if you need a motion. You need a motion? Uh, you've done it in the past, so until we do the new form, I would recommend it. Okay. Sure. All right, go if I, go ahead. I'll make the motion that we uh, approve the private family burial site request as uh, presented by the uh, Alvin. I'll oh. second. So I have a motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. Good luck to you. So do you need you do we we don't have to sign off. So no, I'll, you I'll, have to sign off. I'll get her from Judy tomorrow. I'll sign off on the application tomorrow. Okay. Unless you want to, it's up to you. In, no, that's way. fine. Uh, in, in regard to this, uh, we're lucky Thea is my maiden. If your mom wasn't going to make it while I was here this week, I was going to sign it and let the select board vote afterwards, just in case, so you could actually bury your mother. Um, since Dan has left, we do not have a deputy health officer. And Thea's, we have contacted about this while I was overseas, wasn't back for a week or so. If Thea's mom was really, if things had gone the other direction, we would have had no one in town with the ability to act on this. So the select board, again, really needs a deputy health officer. Uh, it's always been a town administrator previously, but I haven't had one. It's just been me by myself since then. I need that second person for coverage in a lot here. Thank you. I don't know. It seems like Chris. Uh, do you have a recommendation? No. You, well, you yeah, I mean, this is it's not it. a warrant yeah. item, sir. Oh, it's not on the agenda. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we can. I'm just making a recommendation that so this could have gone very differently. I'm glad it worked out. We need to put it on the agenda. Yeah, I think that we would put that on the same time that we approve the. Form. You took the words right out of my mouth. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Good. All right. So I think we're ready to move on to any other business. You're all set. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Our sympathies to you. Thank you. Thank you. So Chris, we're on other business. Okay. Um, we are going to go into executive session. We've got a number of motions here. Um, I move to go into executive session because I find a premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or person involved at a substantial disadvantage. I have a motion of a second. Sorry. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. Um, I would uh, move to go into executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee subject to T1 VSA 313A3 to include interim town administrator Jason Luno, interim uh, human resources director Tina Sweet. Um, we would add um, Sarah Haskins, um, town clerk and treasurer. Is that correct, Judy? Correct. Yes. I have a motion for a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. I move to go into executive session because I find a premature general knowledge, public knowledge or of pending or probable civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body is or may be party will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing this negotiation strategy. Um, I would uh, include um, under legal, uh, the chair, DRB, Gary Nolan, town administrator, Todd Thomas, and executive assistant, Judy Alberi. I have a motion of a second. Second. I have a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. And I would move to go into executive session to discuss the pending or probable litigation or prosecution under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include interim town administrator, Jason Luno. I have a motion and a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. Mm -hmm. 